back to Retirement Clarity Radio. I'm your host, Scott Newhouse. Thanks for being here. Shout out to you and the dozens and dozens of other listeners listening all across the country. Today's episode is going to be a treat. It's a really important uh, conversation that we're going to have about risk versus volatility. What do those terms actually mean? What does the financial media say that they mean? And, and frankly, I think they're wrong. And then what do those terms, what do these terms mean for your retirement income? Uh, that hopefully is going to last for the rest of your life um, and it's not going to run out too soon. So this is a really important topic, um, so I'm glad you're listening and let's just jump right into it. So uh, for those of you that may know me, um, I've been a financial planner for over six years, started in uh, February of 2015, I believe it was. And one of the things that really frustrates me the most is poor explanations as well as kind of the implications of certain financial terms. So this confusion um, that these bad definitions um, stir up, they cause well-meaning investors to make really poor decisions that cost them in retirement. And in some cases, some cases, it actually causes people to have to end their retirement and go back to work. Um, and I, you know, we've all seen that. We know people that have had to do that. We really want to avoid that if we can. Um, and so one of the most dangerous misunderstandings that I see is assuming that risk is the same thing as volatility as well as not understanding what each of those terms actually means. So if you think those are the same things, or if you're not sure how it can play into your retirement, which it absolutely does, uh, then let's clear up those major misconceptions. Let's clarify the differences between those two terms so that you don't make any major mistakes that are gonna derail your retirement. So understanding the difference between risk and volatility. Again, that's what we're doing today. Um, volatility, is how much a stock or fund or whatever you own goes up and down over a period of time. It's that simple, how much it goes up or down over a period or time uh, of time. And so by looking at that definition, we can see that volatility works both ways. The stock price can go up by a lot or it can go down by a lot. Those are both examples of volatility. Now, for example, the stock market might be up 30% one year and then the next year it might be down 10%. What we have been taught especially when you listen to the financial media, is that the negative year is when it was volatile. But on the contrary, both of those swings, the positive 30 and the negative 10, those were both volatile, but we only complained about one. We only labeled one as volatile, but they were both volatile. So that's what volatility is, the ups and downs over the course of the year, um, especially maybe quick swings um, in the ups and the downs. So that's volatility. Now let's talk about risk. According to, and I'm going to talk about the quote unquote traditional sense of risk, and then I'll tell you what I think risk really is, especially in your retirement. So according to Investopedia, risk is the chance that an investment's actual gain will differ from its expected return. It's kind of an academic explanation. I don't love it. Now included in that definition, and this is key here, is that risk means the possibility of you losing most or all of your initial investment. Again, um, risk means the possibility of you losing most or all of your initial investment. So, and if you do other searches um, on the internet for risk, you'll see that some people say that risk is the permanent loss of capital, permanent loss of cas capital. So that is a major theme of what most people define as risk. And so based on that definition, can we say that the stock market is entirely risky? Is, in other words, is it possible to lose all of your initial investment? For instance, uh, if you buy a low cost index fund like the S&P 500, which tracks the you know, top uh, largest 500 companies in the United States, and you put $1,000 into it, will your investment go to zero? I want you to think about that. If you put $1,000 into an S&P fund and just hold it, will your investment go to zero? In my opinion, as long as you follow a disciplined investment strategy, which we've talked about on this podcast before, as well as you avoid key behavioral mistakes like managing uh, your emotion, uh, excuse me, if you avoid managing your investments with your emotions, then no, I don't think your investment's going to go to zero. Um, outside of, you know, making key behavioral mistakes, uh, which cause you to lose all of your investments. Uh, initial investments. The only way I can really think of the S&P 500 going to zero is if all of those companies shut down and ceased to exist entirely, which frankly, you know, if that if that were to happen, those 500 companies shut down entirely, Walmart, Amazon, Apple, uh, they just stopped doing business. That would probably mean we are in the middle of Armageddon and we have bigger fish to fry and figure out in terms of what's going on in the world. 
Um, over the past century, over the past 100 years, the U.S. stock market, again, represented by that S&P 500, has yielded average annual returns of around 10%. Um, so if you had invested $1,000 into the S&P 500 uh, 100 years ago, your investment would now be worth over $13 million uh, just from that alone. Now, of course, during that time, there was a lot of volatility, a lot of ups and downs. And uh, for some periods of times, the downs, the negative years, lasted you know, for five years or more. But did it ever go to zero? Going back to risk, did, did your initial investment in the S&P 500, did it ever go to zero? No, it never did. And if you held on through those down times, did the markets and thus your investments, did they recover and eventually hit new highs? Absolutely. Every single time that has happened, as long as you held on, avoided the key behavioral mistakes, um, that's what happened. So looking at the historical performance of stocks, I don't see how there's really any uh, risk, excuse me, any permanent risk of losing your capital unless you make these big emotional and behavioral mistakes, which cause you to buy and sell at the worst time. So if you can avoid those, I really don't see how there's any risk of you permanently losing your capital um, in the stock market. Now, if you can, and again, this kind of is dependent on you being able to stick to a tried and true strategy, like buying well-diversified, low-cost uh, investments, um, I think your risk in, in the traditional sense is really quite low. So permanent loss of capital, um, not being able to recoup your initial investment, I think that's extremely low. So to sum up, volatility is the swings that your investments will go through, both both up and up and down, positive and negative. And the traditional definition of risk is that you will have a permanent loss in your portfolio. Um, and I think that, frankly, is really low um, probability of happening, especially if you follow a solid investment strategy like we've talked about on this podcast. But going back to what the actual definition of risk should be, I don't think that's the best definition. I think in my mind, the true risk that retirees face, you know, people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s trying to make sure they have that retirement income for life. I think the real risk that you face is not whether your portfolio is volatile, not whether it goes ups and downs, up and down over a short period of time, or that you will experience a permanent loss in your portfolio. I do not think that is the major risk for you. The biggest risk in my mind is that in future years, and especially decades, you know, God willing, you've got you know, 20 to 30 to maybe 40 years of your retirement. The biggest risk you have in that time period is that you have a lot, you will have a loss of purchasing power and your investments will not be able to buy you as much in the future as they did at the start of your retirement. So that is the biggest risk that I think you face as a retiree looking to retire, looking to have a, a retirement income that lasts for three or more decades. So let's discuss how that could actually happen. Um, and we'll talk about three really important things that I think you need to know about risk and volatility. Uh, the first one is that retirees lose money by making quote unquote safe investments. Now it's, it's well established and acceptable in my mind that as we age, we become more risk averse. It makes perfect sense to make different and less risky decisions as you get older. However, this does become a problem when you confuse risk with volatility. So as a result of this misunderstanding um, and thinking they're the, same, they're the same thing, a lot of retirees make the mistake of thinking that in order to make their investments quote unquote safer, they need to get rid of volatile assets. And so what they do is they dump most or even all of their stocks and replace them with bonds because in their mind, they're trying to make their portfolio safer. Um, and now bonds should be a part of almost everyone's portfolio. There's some people that, you know, frankly don't need bonds for a different uh, variety of reasons, but most people should have some degree of bonds in their uh, portfolio. However, that should never be the only thing in your portfolio in retirement because bonds are going to give you the slow and steady returns um, and they're not nearly as volatile as stocks, although they do have some periods where they go up and down a bit. Um, the returns that they generate are low. And so if you're getting three to four percent from your bonds and inflation is you know two and a half to three percent and you're withdrawing four percent you know or potentially more each year you could be setting yourself up for disaster if you're dipping too far into your principal too quickly and it, and then thereby increasing the chances that your portfolio isn't there later in life and that's a really 
giant risk. So by making your investments less volatile, you have actually made your portfolio, in my mind, more risky because you're putting the older version of yourself um, at risk of not having the income that you need later on in life. And so that's one really big key reason why we don't want to confuse risk and volatility and assume the same thing. Because again, you make your portfolio less volatile, in my mind, you've actually made it more risky in the sense that you're not going to have the income that you need later on in life. So that's my number one point that I want to make there. The second point I want to make is talking about the risk of bonds versus the risk of stocks. So as I mentioned before, as you may know, bonds do bring, uh, excuse me, bonds do bring stability to your portfolio. They give you the assurance that your principal won't move too much, no guarantees, but it won't move as much, nearly as much as stocks. Um, and, and so that's how it's different in, in terms of not being as unpredictable and volatile as your stock returns. You also uh, could get similar comfort when investing in money market funds or CDs or certificates of deposits. Now, when you invest in stocks, you accept higher volatility levels. While it's unpredictable, your investment returns has historically have been two to three times as much as bonds. So stocks historically two to three times as much as bonds. Stocks also enable you to grow your money and can boost your purchasing power over time. And so these types of investments um, should help you increase your spending each year without running out of money in the end. So bonds provide a measure of certainty, but they cannot uh, increase your purchasing power much or if it, at all. And so that's why the volatility of stocks is just what your retirement plan needs. Um, as a number of financial experts have pointed out, including Warren Buffett, I believe, one reason why equities, stocks, get substantially higher returns is the volatility that they go through. In other words, the volatility of stocks is simply the price that we pay for getting higher returns. And we need those higher returns to make sure that your purchasing power is there later on in life. And so more often than not, in my mind, volatility is a blessing. Um, those who favor bonds over stocks miss out on the benefits of volatility, which is those much higher returns. And, you know, just it's simply not worth it having too much or, or 100% of your portfolio in bonds when you're in retirement, when you need to make sure that uh, portfolio lasts for the rest of your life. And so the third point I want to make here is that the biggest risk retirees face is not volatility. Um, if risk is properly defined as the loss of purchasing power, which I think it is, and it's and, and not volatility, which some people mistake it for, then the biggest risk retirees face is not having enough stocks in their portfolio. And I, I know that is probably counterintuitive advice. Um, put differently, the biggest race, uh, risk that you're going to face is that your purchasing power does not provide you the income you need in your late 70s, 80s, and 90s. And so a retirement nest egg needs to last throughout your golden years. Any investment that's going to cause you to run out of money or consistently lower your annual withdrawals, i.e. your income, um, especially later on in life when you don't want to go back to work, I think that's a risk that you really need to minimize, not completely eliminate. I'm not saying you should be 100% in stocks um, in your retirement, although maybe it may make sense in your retirement plan. I can't obviously answer that on the show. Um, but having too much in bonds is really going to increase the risk that you don't have the purchasing power that you need. So the fact that your investment accounts are unpredictable and they inherently go up and down, that's not the biggest problem, nor do I think that is your quote unquote risk. Again, the biggest problem in my mind, the biggest risk that you face as someone looking to retire is that you won't have the purchasing power you need later on in life. And the best way to mitigate that worry is to have a solid allocation of stocks and not go overboard on your bond allocation. Although again, I do think for most people, it's appropriate to have some bonds in there, but you can't go overboard. So to wrap everything up, there is some overlap between risk and, and volatility, but it's in my mind, it's really apples to oranges. The more you study the differences, the more you realize that volatility can actually be the solution to unnecessary risk in retirement. Again, this is different financial advice than maybe you've heard in financial media. Uh, so if you plan on maintaining a decent standard of living in retirement, I really do think it pays. I'm biased, of course, but I really do think it pays to use a financial advisor that knows the truth about the real risk that you face in your retirement so that you can create that retirement income that will last for life. But enough theory, enough of this podcast. If you'd like to see what this looks like in reality and the types of services that you know I can help you with, 
uh, just go to startmyretirement.us, emphasis on the US at the end, startmyretirement.us, and we'll create a one-page retirement plan that's going to outline everything you need to do so that your retirement money is going to last as long as you do. And yes, uh, that's a complimentary service that I offer. So that's all I've got for this week. Really important one. So maybe go back and listen to it again, um, because we can't make the mistake of assuming risk and volatility is the same thing in your retirement. It's not. And boy, we really don't want to make that mistake of, of going overboard on our bond allocation in retirement. So thanks for listening. Hope you all have a great week. Thanks again for listening. As a reminder, you should consult with a financial advisor familiar with the specific circumstances of your unique financial situation before making any financial decisions. Nothing in this podcast is a solicitation for the sale or purchase of any securities. Any mentions of rate of return are hypothetical in nature and not a guarantee of future returns. Scott Newhouse, CFP, is an investment advisor representative of Forthright Finances, a California and Nevada registered investment advisor.